Hey guys, so glad that you could be here with us today for our first daily devotional of the week. Now, I actually want to start off with a bit of sad news, but I promise we're going to transition into hope and encouragement. And so the bad news is that many sociologists for a number of years now have been conducting studies looking at culture in the United States of America, uh, what do we believe and how do we act, and after viewing and perceiving how things are currently in our country, sociologists have now said that we are in the post-Christian era. Of course, that does not mean that there are no Christians, that um, we don't have some laws that are founded upon Christian beliefs, but it's basically the idea that Christian beliefs no longer permeate and dominate the culture. And we're seeing a, a gradual shift away from many of those Christian uh, principles and beliefs upon which this country was founded. And uh, studies also show us that each and every year, uh, the percentage of Christians who identify as Christians is going down. The percentage of uh, the American population that participates regularly in church services also declining. And so this is not a good thing. Uh, we do not celebrate the fact that uh, people are turning away from the Lord. That's why I said it is sad. It is bad news. But um, I also want to provide some hope and encouragement because we live in a culture right now where it certainly does seem that many people are becoming hostile towards the Bible and towards the Lord. And people are scheming and plotting and planning. How can we change laws? How can we do this? How can we push Christianity aside? And it's not really that people are upset at Christianity as much as they are upset at the Lord. Uh, they, they don't want his lordship in their life. And so uh, people come up with all sorts of ways uh, to change things in society so that they can live how they want and uh, ultimately can live to fulfill their own wicked and evil desires. But this is not something that's unique to this time or to our culture. Right now, this is something that has happened throughout human history. And I want to read this morning from Psalm 2, where we see a very similar situation. In Psalm 2, it starts off with the verses, Why do the nations conspire in the people's plot in vain. The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. So we see that the people of earth are planning together. They say, we don't like the way God does things. We don't like his statutes. We don't like his laws. We don't want to have to submit to him. Let's come up with this plan where we can overthrow him and we can do things our own way. So there's this plotting and scheming uh, to try to overthrow the Lord. And I, I feel like that's very similar to what we're seeing right now. And I think for us, many people might say, that makes me anxious, that makes me upset, that makes me discouraged. But I love the response in verse 4. As all of this is happening, it says, the one enthroned in heaven laughs. Why does the one enthroned in heaven, God, why does he laugh? Because he knows that they're plotting in vain. See, here's the great news. Here, here's where we don't have to be discouraged. Do you know that no matter what you see in the news right now, no matter what we're reading about, all the negativity, all the anger, all the animosity, uh, all the wickedness and selfishness, in the midst of it all, God is still seated on his throne. He still is enthroned in heaven, and he still reigns. And he knows that one day the schemes and the plots of mankind, they're, at, they're going to turn to absolutely nothing. Nothing is going to be accomplished by them. God's purposes will prevail. And so we as Christians have this tremendous security, have this tremendous hope, this tremendous peace, knowing that he is still in control. And so I just want to encourage you with that, because I think so often... Uh, we can focus on the situations and the circumstances of this world where we don't focus as much on the fact that God is still in control. It's one of those things that we'll say with our, with our mouth. We'll go, oh, I know God's in control. I know God's in control. But all we think about is the chaos. And I just want to give you this opportunity today to sit 
and meditate on the fact and truly believe in your heart God is in control. He looks down, he sees the schemes, they don't bother him because he knows that he is going to make all things right and that the schemes will ultimately result in nothing. Let's pray together this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your sovereignty. We thank you that you are enthroned and no one can knock you off of your throne. Lord, help us to be people of hope and encouragement during this time. God, we want to be different than everybody else. We don't want to be discouraged. We don't want to be angry or hateful. Lord, we want to continue to love and continue to have joy and peace in the midst of the storms. Father, we thank you that you are going to make all things right one day. We thank you for your love and the sacrifice of your son, Jesus, and we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hope your week is off to a great start. We'll see you again tomorrow.